start that. All right. Back up. We're good. Okay, so as far as my attitude and stuff, um, it hasn't really changed that much. Um, you know, I've always tried to, you know, kind of use my head out there and race as smart as I can, um, you know, and stay out of trouble. So, I mean, it's if anything, it's a little bit more so. I might be a little bit more cautious now that I have uh, more mouths and, and numbers that are that might be concerned about me or whatever. But uh, pretty mm-hmm. much the same as far as that. Um, as far as, like, uh, you know, carrying myself, I've always tried to... Uh, make myself a decent, uh, you know, person, or if people wanted to be a, a role model, you know, where I'm trying to act as good as I can, um, you know, kind of uh, just set a good example in general. And, and obviously, I want that. You know, if my kids are hanging out at the track, I want them to see that as well. So, yeah. uh, have you been watching any of like the dirt racing on i uh, with the i racing on TV? Uh, I've been watching a little bit. Um, I've actually tried a couple of those. I'm not very good. Um, <laughs> I, I was into i racing a while back. We actually did a couple K and N races when I was probably like nineteen. Um, so I was on that stuff way back when. Uh, I just recently got another setup um, and started trying to get into it. Obviously, because that's the only thing going on right now. Yeah. Uh, but I'm relatively new to getting back in. So I actually tried to do the Dirt Track Digest uh, race probably about two two and a half weeks or so ago and was uh, pretty awful <laughs> uh, to say the least. So uh, I've been trying to practice. Um, I was actually in uh, a gentleman named Paul Accord just put on a thing uh, by Plattsburgh uh, with some late models at Lernerville. I just tried to do that this weekend, but uh, those are actually harder for me to drive than the sprint cars currently, so yeah. I was even worse at that, so we're going to practice before we try to do any more. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been trying to keep up a little bit. I haven't really caught much of the NASCAR stuff, but the dirt ones I've been trying to catch when I can, Yeah. Um, you know, trying to partake if, if I can, if there's other races going on, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think uh, I think it's kind of cool for everyone to get along and uh, and try to do. You know, you're able to do it with people you wouldn't normally do. Like uh, the race. I actually tried another one last weekend uh, yeah. for New Egypt Speedway, yeah. um, and there's guys like Lance Deweese and some other guys in there that I normally wouldn't be able to try to race against. So yeah, I think that's a very unique and uh, very cool aspect to mm-hmm. have with, with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh... so uh, what goes through what your goes mind through your when mind you're mind spinning mind out mind and possibly going to crash? For example, your flip at Malta last year. Uh, to be honest with you, it happened so quick. I mean, not a, not a lot goes through. Just uh, the only thing I do, you know, you just kind of brace yourself and, and kind of take the ride is all you kind of do. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, before that point, if you know something's going to go wrong, like uh, I've lost my brakes at the valley a couple times uh, going into the corner, so you're, you're trying to as fast as you can, your mind's trying to process what to do and try to get out yeah. of the situation. But uh, it, it literally happened so fast. Like the flip at Malta this past year in the heat race uh, happened so quick. I mean, it was over before I even realized what was really going mm-hmm. on. But uh, uh, I just try to keep you know keep yourself out of any trouble you can. Uh, if something like that's going on, you know, and try to think uh, try to think the best you can ahead of uh, you know how to get out of that. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, you know, with that, I was trying to figure out how I could get out of the car quickly and stuff. But, uh, yeah. you know, landing on your roof, you're kind of all disoriented and whatnot. So, you know, you just kind of wait for them guys to flip you over. Mm-hmm. So, how did you get your nickname, the Ravina Rocket, may I ask? Uh, honestly, that was, uh, there's a gentleman named Brian Bedell of Boomer's Performance uh, over at Lebanon Valley. Uh, his family's done uh, a parts service truck there, you mm-hmm. know. I don't know how many years, probably 50 years. Um, and Brian, uh, one day we were hanging out after the races and stuff, and uh, I was joking that, you know, a lot of these guys have cool nicknames like Ken Tremont, the Sand Lake, Slingshot, you know, Brett Hearns, the Jet, yeah. uh, you know, Jumping Jack Johnson and all those guys. So uh, we were just joking about it and stuff, and, uh, you know, we were living, I was, I'm still living in Ravine. I was living in Ravine at the time, and he, mm-hmm. he just came up with the name, so. Uh, he threw it out there, kind of, kind of stuck with the announcers and stuff, and uh, that's, that's the way it's been. Yeah, uh, I, I've always wondered why, because I always hear the Ravina Rocket, and, the, and then there's a whole bunch of like you said, the Jet and all that. So I wondered, because it all, all like relates to like, uh, like spaceships and stuff, the Rocket, the Jet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that is, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, just, it's just the way it's been. That was probably I don't know, eight, ten years ago. Mm-hmm. So for you, you have a family business. How does that affect your racing? Like, does that hinder with it at all? Knowing that you have to do regular business before you do the racing? Uh, it can from time to 
the time. Um, that's like I said before. That's one of the main reasons we haven't been as active on the uh, the road schedules we have been. Um, uh, myself and uh, our main car car and crew chief uh, Andrew. He works for the business as well um, on top of the racing stuff. So um, we've had a busy couple of summers. So we've been kind of tied up with that, and, and we try to hit what we can. But uh, obviously, racing is an expensive sport, and our uh, our real work funds the racing operation in part. So, um, you know, we gotta, we gotta work and and make money to be able to spend money on racing. So, yeah. um, I would obviously love it if we could, uh, you know, I love racing. I think getting out on the road is, 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 you know, awesome. I have more fun sometimes on the road than I do on a weekly basis because Mm -hmm. it's a little bit less pressure as far as points wise. Um, you know, as far as that and the, the group of guys that you race with on the tour, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think the super dirt car series, you know, that's the only one I've actually ran, you know, full time before, but, um, so I might be a little biased, but you know, it was yeah. one of the, one of the best bunch of guys, um, you know, I've, I've been a part of racing with. So, uh, you know, we're competitive with everybody and, and each other, but, um, you know, a lot of times when you're on the road for a few days in a row and we have the overnight trips and stuff, uh, guys get busted up or break or uh you know even even yeah. during a race if you have a pit stop and you're kind of shorthanded uh you know there was a lot of nights when we were full time was just me and andrew and if we were lucky one other guy so changing tires and stuff mm-hmm. uh you know it would have been next to impossible and, and we all kind of jump in and help each other out with stuff like that so uh yeah. i think uh i miss it and hopefully we can do it some more but uh you know definitely uh Getting back to the original point, the you know the business comes first, so that's that's the mm. situation we're in, unfortunately. So you mentioned your your crew. How does it like? How, does it help? How does it help you with like having four or five guys helping you every week? Like for example, I'm friends with Marilyn and Jay, so that's pretty much how I got this interview to work. So how is it like to have like crew members yeah. to help you out throughout the weeks? Uh huh. It's for guys that, uh, you know, dedicate some time and help out. Um, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of work. I don't, I, I don't know if everybody in the stands always knows kind of how much work goes into all this stuff. Um, yeah. You know, especially if you have a bad night where something really breaks like a motor or you get in a bad enough wreck where you got to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, swap a car over during the week and get a new chassis and whatnot. So um, if you can, if you can have a couple, you know, two to two to four guys that can kind of dedicate some time and are able to with their, their work schedules and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big boost and a, a big help uh, to be able to have that. So I'm very mm-hmm. fortunate. I'm very blessed in that aspect that we can, uh, we can have guys like Jay and, and uh, Jim and a couple yeah. of the other guys on the yeah. crew, um, you know, that can come down, you know, maybe mm-hmm. a night or so during the week or uh, even at the track too. You know, like I said, if you're at the track, you don't have a lot of help. It just makes uh, that much more work for every, you know, the few guys that are involved. So, um, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's definitely key when you can have guys like that. And if they're, if they're especially knowledgeable, like a lot of the guys we have on our crew, then, uh, yeah, it's an added bonus. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, um, what is the, what, what is your best, best like racing like, memory? If you have a yeah. multiple, it's all right. Feel free. Uh, there's a couple, uh, obviously my very first, uh, first modified win at the Valley was pretty special to me. Uh-huh. Um, you know, just like I said before, our family history there, um, you know, my grandfather's on the win list and the champion list. My dad's on the win list and champion list. Uh, my cousin Mark's on the win and champion list. And we're on the win list. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can put our name on the champion list one of these years. Yeah. So we've been close. Yeah. But uh, just always seem to come up short. Um, so that that was probably at the top. Um, one of my favorite non-personal racing memories was uh, getting to see my brother get his first win in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because he... he Sometimes I think uh, I think he loved this sport more than I do. Sometimes, so to see him get that was pretty special for me personally. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably uh, probably time in on the outside pull a dirt week a couple years ago was uh, you know was pretty special. Yeah. I mean that was that was something something cool that you always saw if, you know the front row you know locked in and uh, you know leading the field with the mm-hmm. guy that's on the pole to the green flag for uh, you know one of the biggest races of the year was uh, was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, if you could race against any driver, past or present, who would it be and why? Ooh. Um, someone that I didn't get to race against. That's a good one. Uh, for me personally, it would be Dale Earnhardt because 
He's just a legend. Oh, are we talking any anything? Any, in general? any racing, it can be asphalt, dirt, oh, okay. any of that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'd say probably Dale Earnhardt if we're going that way. I thought we were sticking to dirt. If it, it was uh, both. If it was anybody, I would say probably somebody like Dale Earnhardt. Um, you know, as far as that, he's he's a guy that I've always looked up to. Uh, more so on his, uh, I guess, the fact that he was, you know, he was able to work a normal job on a farm during the week and, and go race yeah. and be dominant at that as well. Um, you know, he's like the ultimate blue collar racer. So uh, I would say him for anybody. Dirt. I'm not sure. I've already been able to race against some pretty awesome names, which mm-hmm. I'm very thankful for. Uh, you know, I got to race against Brett. Uh, you know, I raced against Kenny Weekly. Um, you know, they're, they're big names in the local sport. Um, I was fortunate to race against Jack Johnson when he was still racing. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, one of my one of my favorite races at Malta was actually uh, we didn't wind up winning, but we passed Jack for the lead. You know, late in the race, and we wound up finishing second to Brett. Um, but uh, I guess maybe my dad or my grandfather uh, to answer that. If it was just dirt, just to just to kind of see what it was like, because mm-hmm. I wasn't racing obviously when they were. So yeah. Um, would you have, like, when you're down in Charlotte and, like, Eldora and Volusia, all them big, like, events, what's it like to race those kind of events as a driver? Uh, it's a lot of different setting, um, but it's a lot more fun, I feel like. Um, mm-hmm. any race that we can do that's, like, a, you know, a, a multi-day event or, or, like, a week long or anything like that and has all the, kind of all the hype and, and stuff behind it, um. It's a lot of fun to race because the atmosphere is different than like a weekly deal. Um, you know, it's more fun. It's more relaxed, I would say, uh, between the drivers and the people just hanging out. Yeah. Um, you know, and the uh, the TV stuff makes it a different atmosphere as well when the stuff's getting recorded and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, in the, the facilities at like Charlotte in particular are, you know, second to none. They've, yeah. they've got... I mean, everything there is just, just immaculate and everything, you know, it's different atmosphere down there, obviously, with the different climate and everything, but um, I don't know. It's just probably some of my more favorite events is to run stuff like that, just because the atmosphere is different. Mm-hmm. So, um, what other hobbies do you like to enjoy besides racing? Uh, that's changed since uh, since kids. I uh, used to be, you know, snowmobiling and stuff like that mm-hmm. in the off-season. Um now it's just pretty much, uh, you know, spending time with my kids. Uh, you know, uh, my, my oldest daughter's uh, two and a half now. Um, so my hobbies lately are, uh, you know, following her on her power wheels and all that stuff. Um, other than that, uh, you know, same stuff as when I was younger. You know, I enjoy uh, listening to music and stuff. Uh, I actually play the drums, so I, you know, I, I practice on that stuff. Um, you know, just just anything anything uh anything random you could probably think of i probably do in my spare time so mm-hmm. um hold on what if you got the opportunity to race nascar would you would you race nascar if you could if you got like the opportunity would you would you race nascar oh um i tried i think uh you there yeah i'm here uh, I would do it to, to try it. Um, I'm always open to trying anything different with, mm-hmm. with you know with a motor in it. Um, like I said, we actually did uh, did a race or two back when I was way younger uh, in the K and N E series at uh, Loud, and we attempted one at Phoenix. Um, you know, and that was kind of on my radar back then when I was a lot younger. I'm kind of I'm kind of outdated for trying to pick up a ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, Without, you know, without knowing somebody nowadays at 34, but if the opportunity came up, you know, I would at least try it. Uh, I, th- I think it's one of those things that you, you know, you would kind of kick yourself if you didn't try it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd like to try a sprint car maybe one day. My wife grew up around sprint cars. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't know the right people, I guess, to try to get in. You know, yeah, I would, I would, I would test probably almost anything race car wise mm-hmm. that, uh, that came across my radar. Yeah. So you got any questions for me or anything else you want to add to my show? Uh, not that I can think of. All right. Well, Keith, I thank you for your time today. I, uh, I appreciate you being on the show. And uh, have a good season. Yeah, hopefully, get, hopefully we get racing soon. And uh, have a good rest of your pandemic 
quarantine. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you on the racetrack soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thank yep. you. You, yep. you uh, stay safe. You too. All right. Bye. Thank yep. you. So that was Big Black Modified Driver Keith Flack. Uh, we had a little bit of some t connection issues. If he's frozen in some of this video, I understand that's he lives in he lives about an hour away from me, so he's probably got a lot of it's tough when you have like a connection issues like that and all that. But definitely cool to have him on the show. I'm really I really appreciate him being on the show. Um, there are more interviews to come. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We will definitely be having many more drivers on the show um my page on facebook is out of the fast lane feel free to like that page and post anything racing involved in that i highly suggest that you guys can do that because it's interactive for like people and drivers like keith that are in that page and stuff where you can like interact with them and like they'll answer back and stuff so it's pretty cool so um make sure you guys like that um, my Instagram is Brady Hauser, or out of the fa or my other page is out of the fast lane on YouTube, YT on Instagram. If you want, if you want to book any interviews with me, just reach out to me. I'll definitely get you into the schedule. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah.